Hello, friend. Once again, we are live. My name is Mohammed Faridi. I'm the host of this show called Forsaking My Father's Religion. I actually wrote a book called Forsaking My Father's Religion. It is a free resource on our website. If you go there and write to us, we'll get them to you for free. Today, I have the privilege and the honor to introduce to you my brother Torai from Afghanistan. He has a powerful testimony. He has actually wrote a book. I found that book on Amazon. That book is called... Uh, um, what was the name of your book, brother? Just Destined to Die. You can find that uh, beautiful book on Amazon. You can purchase it. Uh, and uh, he's going to share his testimony today. But he's not destined to die anymore. Because Jesus has died for our sin. That we, we may live. Brother Torai, thank you for accepting my invitation and coming on this channel. Please go ahead and share your testimony. Yeah, thank you so much. And, uh, honestly, I'm very excited and I am very excited because what I'm going to share here uh, it's, uh, can be a life changing story. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you are watching this live or this record or listening to my voice. And I want you to know this is not by coincidence. This is not the result of accident. And I believe there is God because I know Jesus. I know God loves us. It's because the blood of Jesus on the cross. And I know God has planned for us because Jesus said, believe in me and come follow me. My name is Torai and I am from Afghanistan. I live in Italy, in Roma, Italy. I want to I want to start with sharing uh, my testimony in three parts. My life before Jesus, where and how I met Jesus, and uh, my life as a newborn Christian. But before I go any further, I would like to see it with anyone and tell them how Jesus changed my life. And, uh, and what I learned, and it took me nine years to learn it. I might not be able to do that. That's why we are doing this. And also, as you heard in the beginning, that's why also we wrote this book. So, and, I wrote, and I wrote this book. But uh, my my life before I met Jesus is quite simple. I raised as a Shia Muslim, but I took Islam very seriously. In a, in a very nice um, family, and they were very kind, but extremely strict. And knowing Islam and, and be a, being a, a very good Muslim was something very, very important for them. So in a young age, I became a teacher in a mosque. It was because of my uh, uh, close relatives that were involved in a mosque and I was spending a lot of time in mosque. And uh, before I left Islam, I finished the Quran reading in Arabic 105 times. But this is what I count. But in Afghanistan, we were going to events uh, every Friday. So we were reading the Quran. Sometimes I remember we would finish the whole Quran in one day. Uh, but if I count all of them together, uh, I think I finished the Quran more than 150 times in Arabic language. But Honestly, I didn't understand much of it because it was in Arabic and I didn't know what is here. So I was reading uh, and thinking that I'm talking with God, but 
it was not true, and it is not true. And I uh, was living in Afghanistan. We had uh, we had a normal life there, and I was very busy uh, and working so hard. And uh, now in my new life in Jesus, I share my testimony with so many Muslims, and they respond to me, "Tora, I, I am Muslim." And I said, "Well, I was also Muslim one day." And they say, like, you know, I am I am very good Muslim. So I say, well, I was also a very good Muslim. They said, I know, I know Islam is like true and like I read the Quran, I said, you know, I also I also believe that Islam is true and I also read the Quran. I also I I memorized the Quran. That's what I was doing in Afghanistan before I left Afghanistan in, in the end of two thousand seven. So I almost memorized the half of the Quran because I was planning, my plan was like to memorize the whole Quran. But, uh, so I was a very good Muslim. I think I lived as a very, very good Muslim. And I believe there is God. And I know there was God. But there was something missing. I didn't know Jesus. Uh, maybe this is very hard for some people to believe as uh, I raised as a Shia Muslim and uh, before uh, in before 2013 I really didn't know anything about Jesus I didn't even heard anything that's true about Jesus like well some people just say like Messiah even like one of the prophets God sent it but so I want to go, I want to move now to Norway. So this part of my story, my testimony is like how I met Jesus, how I became uh, a Jesus follower and why, what happened to me. So this part of my testimony can be very interesting. And uh, and it's uh, and it's, it's the best, uh, it can Brother, be before. Before you move on, let me ask you a quick question. So, you were born and raised a Shia Muslim. You went to mosque, and uh, you practice Islam. You recited the Quran 150 times. You memorized it, and even go go through the whole Quran in the mosque for uh, uh, once a day. Uh, as a Shia Muslim, we do self-flagellate and we beat our, uh, our chests and we go and be our backs with um, uh, to mourn ritually for the dead imams of the Shia. Did you do any of that? Well, no, actually, I mean, like, I think I didn't have um, the, the chance, but I think, yeah, I, I was close to that. No, but I didn't. I'm, I'm so glad that I didn't. But I was a very practical Muslim, and I... Um, and I was always praying, and I, I don't, I don't remember that I missed pray, uh, prayers. And um, but every time in the end of pray, my prayer, I was reading the Quran also. And um, but as a good Muslim, I I just didn't go to Mecca, and I didn't go to Karbala. That is very important for Shia. But for both of them, I was trying so hard, and it was my big dream that one day I'll be able to go to Mecca and go to Karbala. But I didn't do any of them. So, but I think anything else that was important as a good uh, Shia Muslim, I have done. So uh, you did you did your prayers and you did. Um go to mosque but you never did your pilgrimage the pilgrimage um, pilgrimage is going to mecca or to karbala or any of them. no no i i i didn't do that i think uh, one of the reason i i didn't go there i think it was very difficult but i think otherwise i would definitely would go okay so please carry on yeah so i uh in 2010, um, in Norway, in the end of 2010 in Norway, I was praying and I was reading the Quran. And I finished the Quran for the last time when I was in Norway. Uh, 
I read the Quran and then uh, before I just finished, my roommate, he was, he didn't believe in Islam and he didn't believe in any religions. And he was always telling me that religious, religions are the cause of all kinds of problems. And he was not doing that. But one day while he was there and I did my prayer and I read the Quran and before I finished, he laughed at me. He was making fun of me. And I, when I realized that he is making fun of me, and I got really mad. And I, uh, I was almost to fight with him. So I got very serious and I said like, well, if you don't do that, don't make fun of me. And he was uh, shaking his head and he said like, Torah in 21st century, what the heck is wrong with you? Why are you doing those things? So, and he said, you know, you are mad at me, but before you punch me, let me ask you a question. If you could answer this question, I promise that I, could, I will do anything you want, want me to do. I said, okay, what's your question? He said, can you tell me what it is said, the part of the Quran you were reading? Well, I, was, I got very embarrassed. I said, like, no. He said, that's my problem. You are doing something that you didn't choose. You are reading something that you don't know. You have no idea. I said, wow, this is really makes sense. He said, and then I started reading the, the Quran and I downloaded the PDF and in Farsi and I was reading and reading. But in the end of 2011, I became an atheist. So, you know, that's why here I just want to ask this, these questions. Are you Christian? If yes, so am I. Are you Muslim? I also lived a very good Muslim for over 22 years. Are you atheist? I also lived as an atheist. So in no way, uh, in, in, in the end of 2011, uh, I got so confused. It was just because I read the Quran in Farsi. And when I was reading, I said like, what? the heck was wrong with me? Like, why did I read this, this words, this, like, this chapters, this part of the Quran so many times? This is not anything. Like, it's... So, and I, I, I became a lost soul. And, uh, and I stopped talking that I don't believe in any religions, so I was totally out of Islam, and I didn't believe in Islam. And I was want to say this that one day when uh, you know when uh, a few of my friends in Norway they invited me to go to uh, you know like uh, the this thirteen black days like the Muharram and the Ashura uh, they said let's go there and I said well I don't believe in any religions I'm an atheist and one of them he shook his head and he said like well. All right, you are so lucky that you're not in Afghanistan because otherwise you would know what I would do. And I said, like, can you tell me what you would come to? He said, well, you will know. You already know. You know, this, these guys, they were not joking. They were not kidding. They were quite serious. They were talking about they're going to kill me because I didn't believe in Islam. I didn't believe in God. But... Uh, I was thinking that religions are not, we don't need religions, and religions are the cause of all kind of war and problems. So, and there was a guy, he was saying, he was telling me that, hey, let's go to that place, you know, just sign your name, write your name, and you become an atheist officially. So, but I was very practical and a practical atheist, and I was talking about people and I was challenging Muslims to uh, religions are not Muslim it's just uh, uh, religions are just combination of rules and it's not about uh, God is like there is no God and all this thing so I lost a lot of my friends and they were they were sometimes they were really mad at me and uh, when we were playing football one of them they talked on me 
and they wanted to broke uh, my legs. So and they were and I couldn't hang out with them. Why? Because I I was not one of them. I didn't believe in Islam anymore. I was not Muslim, so but I born Muslim, but I was not Muslim, and I was talking there is not God. But in the end of 2012, I had a dream. So in my story, there is th there is uh, three dreams that I'm going to uh, share. I had a dream that in my dream, uh, I was in Afghanistan, but physically I was in Norway. In Afghanistan, in my town, there were people, they wanted to kill me because I didn't believe in God and I, did, I was not Muslim anymore. And they beat me so much, and uh, they want to. They just want to hang me. But something happened. I just ran out of their hands. So I walked. Uh, I was running, and there was a big crowd. Um, they were behind me, and they were just wanted to catch me and kill me. So there was an, a mountain in my town. Uh, it was a very very high mountain. So I chose that mountain, and I walked, and I was running that mountain till the the top of the mountain. So when I got in the top of the mountains, the other side of the mountain, it was like in heaven. And there was something I never seen in my life. I don't know if I will ever, ever will be see, maybe one day, you know, in next life. But there was not any, there, there, was, there was something somehow like I couldn't go any further. But this crowd, they were running to catch me, and they were getting closer and closer. So I was so nervous in my dream, and I was very worried. And I said, like, you know, I don't believe in God, so how can I ask God to help me, you know? Yeah, but, uh, but I just said, like, God, help me. So, um, and I, I couldn't go any further because it was just like, there was like not, I couldn't go. So I, I would fall. In like there was no end, so it was just like, and it was like you jump from the very very high uh, skyscrapers from very high building. It was it was like it, you couldn't see the end of it. So, but it was very beautiful. And when I asked God help me, a word I heard the voice said jump, and then I didn't jump. And then I, uh, the, the people, they were getting closer and closer. And the second time the voice said, jump. And I couldn't jump because I was scared, like, where I'm going to be? So, and, uh, but then the, the moment the crowd wanted to catch me, and uh, for the third time, the voice said, jump. And I jumped, and I became like a bird, so I could fly you know and i didn't die then i woke up when i woke up i was really scared and i was sweaty and i was very thirsty and i was kind of tired so i couldn't fall asleep and i and then i talked with my friend about it i said look i had a dream and it's it seems like it was just more than a dream he said like come on Tori." What is going on with you? This is just a dream. This is something you were thinking about it. And your subconscious mind played that for you and blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, you know what? Honestly, I was not thinking about any of those things. And uh, no, this is not, this is, this can be more than just a dream. He said, no, don't be confused. So, and I was, then I got very confused and uh, said, well, there should be God. Is there God or no? And then uh, it, was, uh, it was such a beautiful day uh, in, 2000, um, in the end of 2012, like in the beginning of 2013. And there were so many people, like over hundreds of people. And I was just sitting in the, the like, uh, right very close to the door of the very big room there were like so many people Norwegians and people from many different countries and it was like they were celebrating something and uh, a woman a beautiful woman and a uh, very nice and very intelligent 
uh, woman and now I call her like uh, mama it's like she's like my mom and she walked all the way from the other side of the room and came and said like hey my name is Elsa Maria Rafus and I said hey my name is Tori he said you know uh, do you want to come to my house I said Oh, that's a very surprising. Yeah, I, I would love to come. Yeah, they said, okay, so give me your contact number, like, you know, give me your number, phone numbers. So, and she called me, it was around Christmas that year, like, uh, no, uh, yeah, it was before Christmas, actually, in the end of 2012. So then, uh, uh, and I went to her house, and, and she said, like, you know, uh, as a Christian, uh, we pray before we eat. Do you mind if we pray? I said, no, no. Just go ahead. So a few months later, she invited me to a, a restaurant, and uh, and it was also her family there. And uh, and she said like, "Hey, Tori, um, do you eat pork?" Uh, because she know she knew my background, so she just made sure that if I don't want to eat pork, and uh, if there is something not halal, you know, <laughs> saying that. And uh, I said, you know, uh, religions are not important to me anymore. And I don't have any religions. She said, well, religions are not that important to me either. But, but then I became wondering. I said, like, can I ask you a question? She said, go ahead. I said, what's, what's your religion? She said, well, you know, Tara, I'm a Jesus follower. I said, oh, okay. Yeah, he's a good prophet. She said, you know, he's more than prophet. I said, well, I, I learned about him uh, when I was Muslim, and he's one of the prophets. She said, he's the son of God. I said, I, I said well, no, it can, cannot be true. She said, you know, Torah, he is God. Well, I... Uh, I really didn't have anything to say except like smiling, laughing. So, well, he's so I left the restaurant and I became, I left the restaurant with many questions, but all different questions. And, uh, but then uh, one day I was with um, refugees so like from Iran, Afghanistan. And I said like, hey guys, I have a question. There were some people, they lived in Norway for a long time. I said, what Christians believe? Uh, is that true that they're calling Jesus the son of God? They said, come on, Torah, what's going on with you? They are infidels. They just do shirts that they do like. they adding something to God. Don't, don't be curious about those things. Don't try to ask questions about those things. I said, you know what? I don't I didn't ask you like to give me a speech like do you know what they believe? Have you ever go, uh, have you ever been in the church they said, "Oh, don't go to the church." So I said, well, these people probably I I went to the wrong address, you know. I thought like these people they will <laughs> they don't have the answer of my question. So after a while, I went back to this lady. I said, Mama, uh, I want to know a little bit more about Christianity. She said, oh, wow, that's good. Uh, that's a very good idea, but you know, you better know first Jesus, because everything is about him. Nothing exists without him. I said, well, this statement is very, very happy for me, but I don't believe that anyway. So how can I know Jesus? So he, she introduced me with a pastor, and I met the pastor. So I went to his office, and I introduced myself, and he said, like, hey, I heard about you. You want to know about Christianity, about Jesus? I said, yeah. He said, I don't want to take your time much, but I will just i show you something, and then we will be done. I said, okay. So there was two tables, like, you know, like this. 
So he wrote uh, God and put in this table, and he wrote my name, put in the other table, but then he separated. And then he put, he wrote sin and he put in the middle. And he asked me to just look at that for a few seconds, a minute. I said, yeah, well, the problem is like, I don't know if God exists or not. He said, you know, yeah, Jesus. I said, well, okay, but anyway. And he was nice to me, and I was really nice to him, but I was um, kind of, I was becoming more curious, you know, like, okay. So he said, like, you know, Tori, I am kind of busy, but can I meet you next week? I said, yeah. So when I had the whole week to just thinking about this, uh, you know, what he did, then and I was thinking, like, so... He said that we are separate from God and a sin separated from God. That was the first time I ever heard like the sin, the other side of sin. Like I just heard like something you eat, you put a sin inside you, you know, you do this, it's a sin. And like in the end of the day, like you try to do your, try make sure that your good work will be more than your sin or something. But I, I really reflect on that. I said, like, okay, so I have one question when I go next week. So you said, uh, so I went the, the, the following week when I went, uh, I said, like, Alex, I have a question. He said, go ahead, Torah. I said, based on what you explained to me, the sin separated us from God, and we are separate from God. So... How can we how can we be with God? Well, were we with God before? He said, Yes. And we are separate now. So, so how can we be with God again? And he drew the cross and he put it there and bring the table together. So well, okay. I said, like, wow, is that, is that Jesus? I will never, ever going to forget this. He said, Tore, only Jesus. I said, okay. he said, Tore, listen, listen, listen. Only Jesus. I said, okay, well, anyway. So he gave me the Bible, and I still have it. And, uh, and I'm reading every day. And um, so I start reading the Bible and I started from Genesis. When I got to genealogy and I said, oh my goodness, it's so boring. Well, I need to find some interesting books, you know, like I don't want to know these things like, you know, the Old Testament. But then I, uh, Elsa Maria, she asked me like if I am reading, if I understood anything. I said, well, it's so boring. I don't want to reading so i just put aside and then she said go read the new testament i said well there is two books they said old testament and new testament so i started the new testament uh when i arrived in the gospel of john everything changed you know um when I was reading the Gospel of John, like when I started, they said the beginning. In the beginning, I said, well, oh my goodness. Is Jesus, is, so if, if God exists, is that Jesus? Is Jesus another God? Well, so I was asking these questions. I didn't want to know, and uh, but thankfully, well, I don't know. Unfortunately, or well, fortunately, I I couldn't meet with uh, the pastor, but I had a chance to read the Bible a lot. So I was reading the Gospel of John those days, and I uh, 
and I there was saying like uh, in, in chapter ten, um, verse uh, twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. I read those words in two thousand fourteen, maybe five hundred times. I really want to know what is this talking about. So God the Father can do all those things, and I also can do that. And I said, well, what does that mean? But then when I was reading verse 30, they said, Father and I are one. I said, well, okay. I got to, I got to the conclusion that I said, all I want to know is what is this verse means, verse 30 in chapter 10. All I wanted to know is that the pastor helped me that he said, then he just showed me another part of the Bible. But, and I got to the, that part of my life, I was, you know, like there was more reason to believe in Jesus than, you know, than not believing in him. But, I was 100% aware of the consequences. So because I already experienced like being atheist, like my friends, they really were so mad at me and they were quite serious. You know, they said if you were in Afghanistan, we would <laughs> we would do something uh, very special with you. You know, they were talking about like serious things, like dangerous things. So I said, wow, if I become a believer, a Jesus follower, I cannot go back to Afghanistan. My family, my friend. So, and then uh, the pastor, I, I shared this with the pastor, and he said, Torai, let's pray. And I remember he said, Jesus, Lord, help Torai to. to see you, to believe in you, and uh, help him to understand all, everything he wants to know. So, and I was, you know, I was reading uh, uh, chapter six, um, and there was Jesus um, saying like, the way, the life, and especially when Jesus was saying like, um, like I am the resurrection, the resurrection. So because you know, you and I, we know, like you know, the word rastaches. That is all Muslims believe. The one day, you know, and Jesus resurrection, was, resurrection. Yeah, you know, like the you know, in the in Farsi word, I was saying like I said, wow. So, and then. Uh, and also the part is said like I am the resurrection in Farsi will be like uh, uh, especially in one in one uh, translation it said like I am uh, man uh, uh, like man kiamat wa hayat hasam so and uh, I am you know the resurrection uh, like and I was thinking like if all these are true I will believe in him but. The consequences is real. So the truth has the consequences. Uh, and uh, I knew that. Um, but then I was, I didn't know really what to do. So then I had a dream. This is my second dream. In my dream, I was alone. I had felt very lonely and I had felt so sad and I was crying in my dream. And uh, I was just by myself. There was no one else around me. And uh, the city I was living, it was empty. And it was really sad moment. But during that time, this woman, Ilsa Maria, she came and gave me a hug. And she hugged me and she said, she asked me, Tori, what happened to you? I said, I am alone. And during that, in my dream, there was a very bright light, a very bright light from the sky among the clouds was coming from the clouds that were coming to, to the earth. 
And it was just right in front of us on the sky. And she pointed to that light. She said, look at that light. That light is for you. That light is Jesus. It means God loves you. I love you. And you're not alone. I woke up and I shared my dream with her. And she said, like, so many people at the church, they were praying for you. But that week I read the Bible when I heard, when I read the Bible in the, in the Gospel of John said like, I am the light of the world. You know what? I closed uh, my Bible and I said, Jesus, I believe in you. But I think I was still not ready. So, and a few weeks later, I watch a Jesus film. In the end of the movie, you know, every time I get to this part of my story, it's very hard for me to to not be emotional. And uh, and most of the time, I just control myself so hard to not be very emotional and not cry. And um, so I was watching a Jesus movie, and I was by myself, and it was in the afternoon in my room. In the end of the movie, when Jesus was on the cross, all bloody, you know, and uh, the image talked to me. And, I, and the image said, like, Torai, I did this also for you. And I spent some time there and I was just, I was so, I was also very emotional. And I said like, Jesus, thank you for you did this for me. And now I want to say like, the reason sometimes I will be emotional is because Jesus died when I really didn't know him. Jesus died for me when I didn't like him. Jesus called my name when I didn't know his name. Jesus loved me when I was hating, hating him, like when I didn't like him. Jesus was watching me and want me to know him while I was running from him. Jesus want me to have eternal life while I was wanting to go to hell. Jesus wanted me to be with him forever and to be saved while I was going running away from him. So this all these things I realized that Jesus died for me, but, and I was, you know, then uh, I read, I was reading the Bible, and I read that Jesus raised from the dead. That was the moment I decided to go get baptized, because I, I accepted, I believed that Jesus died for me. But I was not 100% aware that he also raised from the dead and he is alive and like, you know, and he's watching me and he is actively working in people's life. So when I realized that and I talked with my other pastor, I said like, what is any other uh, steps? I believed in Jesus. I believed he is more than a prophet. I believe he I believe he is a son of God. I believe he is God. Next time as a Christian, if I want to talk about God, I'm not talking I'm not talking without Jesus. When I'm talking about uh, about Jesus, I'm not talking without God. So Jesus and God are one for me. And the pastor said like, "Do you believe he is the only way I said, I believe he is the only way. He said, and then he asked me, like, why do you believe 
he is the only way. Why do you believe he is the son of God? And I said, I read them all in the Bible. He said, do you believe the Bible is the word of God? I said, yeah, I believe. I said, Jesus talked to me through dreams and through circumstance, through darkness. So in 4 November 2014, I got baptized. It was on Tuesday, and it was one of the most beautiful days in my life. Uh, and, uh, and before I get baptized, I looked to the cross, and I said, Lord, I decided to follow you. Whatever happened to me, I don't care. Am I going to lose something? Am I going to get something? But it doesn't matter. What is matter like? I will know you now. I will follow you. And it's all about like I'm going to get you. So that's why when, the, when we talk about the truth has the consequences, you might get something, you might lose something. But it's not about what you get, what you lose. It's like all about who you're going to get. It's not like what you, uh, when we're talking about salvation, when we're talking about how you be saved, and when we talk about like internal life, it's not about what you know, it's who you know. And uh, so I left Norway, now I'm in Rome. I arrived here in 2000, uh, in the uh, middle of 2015, so now, this part of my life, my story is like after I became a Jesus follower. It's all different. And I am very a new person. And uh, I uh, helped um, so many people to hear about Jesus. And I shared the gospel with literally with thousands of people. And it was for many of them, it was for the first time that someone talked to them about Jesus, especially people from Iran and Afghanistan. And uh, more than 70, 75 people got baptized. And uh, in our house church, uh, we had people, uh, one day we had uh, 35 people, and they were from 12 different countries. And uh, you know what? Like, like, um, yeah, 11 from 12, they were all from Muslim countries. From Africa to, you know, Asia, Middle East. And I was talking about, uh, I was sharing, and that day I shared my testimony and I said, like, I didn't know Jesus. And, uh, and some people said, like, uh, well, we know Jesus, but when I start talking the Jesus from the Bible, they say, no, no, <laughs> not this Jesus. But so, and uh, you know, my new life in Jesus is, I am dedicated my whole life to share the gospel and to serve. And I, um, I shared the gospel with so many people through the house church in a person. I shared the gospel through WhatsApp Messenger back in Afghanistan, in Iran. And uh, people became a believer even in Afghanistan. And uh, yeah, so many people uh, uh, called me from Sweden, Norway, and uh, Holland. And after they became a believer, they said, Torah, you were the first person, like, you talked to us about Jesus. And uh, today we just remember that, and we want to thank you. you. And uh, it's not really about me. It's, it's all about Jesus. Because when I, when I stood up, I said, like, Lord, I want to follow you. And God said, Jesus said, Jesus had a plan for me. So, and Jesus... Blessed me so much in Rome 
not with materials or anything else, but with godly people, with the very, very good mentors, the, with the people, they had the big heart for Jesus, for people, for refugees. And since that, I learned how to serve, and uh, I am exploring every day and how to serve and how to share the gospel. And that's what I'm doing here. And I also have an, a part-time job, but my main job is like, like doing ministry and you know sharing the gospel like so and uh, we are like uh, hosting uh, events you know for like uh, we uh, in 2020 and 21 we celebrated 17 birthdays you know and for 15 of them it was for the first time in their life and some of them even cried they said like no one loved us like this no one cared about us it's said, Torah you're like our parents. I said, you know, Jesus loved me so much. And Jesus loves you guys as well. And what I all can do is just love you all and serve you. And uh, I, I always want to point to Jesus because I just don't want them to be confused. So, and, um, and my third uh, dream, I just don't want to miss it. In the middle of 2019, a friend of mine, he went to Iran to get married. And uh, he was, he is a Christian, he was Christian. But after he got married, like his, his spiritual life is like up and down. So I knew that something is wrong with this decision. So, and it was very early in the morning. I went to the, you know, I went outside and it was like around 4 a.m. And I looked up, I said, Lord, I also want to get married. But I want to put everything in your hand. Whoever you introduce to me, I will wait for that day. So, you know, that week I had a dream. So this is the third dream. And uh, in my dream, it was my wedding. So my friends, they drove me with a very nice car and drove me to a very nice uh, restaurant. And just uh, I could see the inside the building from outside. And it was very beautiful. And they were saying, like, Tori, are you excited to go meet your bride for the first time in your life? I said, yeah. So I was very excited to go meet my bride. It's my wedding day, but you know, and but I didn't know my bride. So I was supposed to meet my bride in my wedding day for the first time. So the moment I entered to the building, I woke up and I was kind of sad. I said, oh my goodness, what would happen if I would wake up Five minutes later, you know, I wanted to see my bride. You know, like about 10 days later, so I met my wife, Abby. Uh, no, we got married in June 2021, and our beautiful daughter, she is seven months now. And we all together uh, um, doing ministry here, and we had people uh, in our house church on Sunday, uh, yesterday, and uh, there was a new person. And there was a uh, Muslim, there was uh, an atheist, uh, there was uh, the, uh, and, and it was, uh, there was a guy for the first time here, and uh, he was very excited, and he said, I will come next week. So uh, this is what we are doing here, and I am, um, I am so blessed that uh, that we had this time together, and I was able to uh, to talk about uh, how how Jesus changed my life. And I uh, I really like to add this in the end of my story. Uh, I really like to finish this with the questions. Do you know? Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? This is the third question. Probably this is also the most important question. Do you follow Jesus? 
So, as a Christian, um, today is a very important situation and a very important time that we take a step and accept that Jesus has a plan for us. And Jesus said, come and follow me. I did that. You know, and I, and Jesus took care of me. And I trusted him, and I will trust him. And uh, if there is some people, they, they are a believer, but they are afraid to share their faith, you know what? Since 2015, so many people even tried to beat me, like they tried to punch on my face, and they threatened me to death. And they didn't let me to enter to a very, very big park in, in, in the center of Rome. They said, you cannot enter in this park, all my countrymen. And people insult me, disrespect me. And, um, you know, nothing happened to me. And I, I, I grow and I become stronger. You know what? If they did that to Jesus, probably that's going to also going to happen to his followers. So, but I don't want you to focus on that part. There is another part that another side of this, it's the most important. What if a person became a believer? What if, what if uh, Ilsa Maria, she wouldn't challenge me? What if she was like scared and she was saying like, well, no, I don't want to talk about Jesus, about my faith. He might get offended. You know, there is possibilities. Maybe I was still a lost soul. Mm -hmm. But she got the courage and talk. And that was something started, you know. Maybe also, you know, your lifestyle also will be a start for a big change. So I'm very happy and grateful that I'm a, I know Jesus today and I live my life um, by serving and following him. And uh, I wish there was time uh, that I would share some stories that how people born in a Saddam Hussein prison and then Jesus served them in Rome and they shared the gospel with people and and he has amazing story and he doesn't have to say story he is the story so God is working and um, refugees are, um, are amazing people. And there are the people that Jesus died for them. And there are so many Afghans, Iranians, from Middle East, from Muslim countries in the US, in, the Euro in Europe. You know, maybe they are more than just a refugee. Many of them, they never had a chance to hear the name of Jesus even one time in their life. Mm -hmm. They didn't have access to Bible, and there was no one ever talked to them about Jesus because it was impossible. Like, you know, it's very, very hard. Like people, uh, the people like I, I am in contact with them in Afghanistan, you know, and but we are blessed with here and we can. At least we can try and we can talk to them, you know. And uh, it's so it's so simple, and it's the, one of the one of the most beautiful job, <laughs> you know. It's it's such it's so amazing. It's really it's joy. Joy joy came from when you uh, when you let people to know Jesus, and uh, and uh, you'll be you'll feel joy.
and you will be very happy. And, uh, and that happiness and joy will not come from anything else. So I hope you will experience that. Thank you so much for this time. Wow, folks, you heard it. Powerful testimony of Torai, our brother from Afghanistan. He was raised a Shia Muslim in the country of Afghanistan. He was a devout Muslim, practiced Islam, recited the Quran. But after he moved to Europe, there was one person that reached out and said, do you know who Jesus is and why you need Jesus as a son of God? And that one person became the catalyst, became the person, the ambassador of Christ to bring him out of that darkness, going from Islam to atheism. He was challenged once because he was reciting the Quran, Farsi speaking man, just like me, I'm from Iran, he's from Afghanistan, we, we both speak Farsi, he speaks Dari, we speak a language that is not the language of the Quran, but they taught us how to recite and memorize the Quran. And then somebody asked, what are you reading? What is this book? What's this prayer? What is this Quran? And he had no, nothing to say because he didn't know. It's in another language. And that man challenged him, but that challenge made him going from Islam to an, to an atheist. And then later on, God sent an ambassador, a laborer, to cross his path and bring him out of the darkness of atheism and Islam. And through that love, through that mercy, that woman brought to Torah's life, look what the Lord can do and has done in his life. He converted to Christianity. He's an ex-Muslim from the country of Afghanistan, converted to Christianity, and now is involved in the church, Farsi, a Persian-speaking church, and he's leading people to the Lord and baptizing them. What a powerful testimony. What a beautiful story. This is God's redemption story, Torah. That is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has redeemed us from our sins, from our wickedness, from our ignorance. He has redeemed us and transformed us from the kingdom of darkness to, to His kingdom, which is the kingdom of light, love, mercy, goodness, and hope. And as you said, He is the resurrection and life. What a great and powerful and mighty God we serve. And now you are being that catalyst to lead a lot of people out of the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of beloved Son. Folks, I, I posted his book in the comment. He used, he used to be destined to die. His book is Torah Mirzai. His book is on Amazon. I posted it on, in the description. You can buy and read more. And uh, Torah, I really am so thankful that you take the time to share your powerful testimony. The Bible tells us as we, we are overcoming him, Satan, and this world by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and we do not love our lives unto death. Our life doesn't belong to us. Our life belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, the creator and the author of life, the person who has given us life and he has the authority to tell us what to do with it. He's not only our brother or our, or our God, he's our master, he's our Lord, he's a, he, we belong to him. I'm so thankful, brother, for sharing your testimony, and I would love for you to pray in Farsi for the people that are watching. I know we have people from all over the world that they're watching this show from every nation. There are a lot of people that are married to the Muslims. They need prayers. There are people that are Muslims watching this program, but I would love you to pray in Farsi and also in English as we close this hour. I really, really appreciate you. Take the time, uh, brother, and pray for us. Brother Troy, I think you're muted. Would you unmute yourself? Um, Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful uh, moment and I, I really like to pray and uh, yeah.
Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. I'll pray for sin, for sin. خدای پدر جلال برنامه مسیح پدر من امروز که در افغانستان بودم و چیزی درباره تو نشنیده بودم اگرم شنیده بودم درست نبودم اما الان امروز من تو رو میشناسم و نه یک فقط تو رو میشناسم بلکه در این چند سال اخیر باید زندگی کردم. بلند تجربت کردم. خدا قدرت تو بهترین قدرت است در این دنیا و قدرت تو بالاتر از هر قدرت دیگر هستم. خدا کسایی که تا حالا به این درگ نرسیدن کمکش کن بیرسن که تو بلند پیروز شدی بر مرد و کسایی که حفظ دارن و شک دارن و تردید دارن تو میخوام اونا رو کمک کن میخوام اونا رو هرچی زودتر خودت نزدیک کنی و میخوام که اونا احساس کنن، تجربه کنن عشق تو رو، محبت تو رو بگم اونا خدای هر کس هر خواسته ای دارند بیشتر از هر کسی دیگه هم به تو نمایان است و تو بیشتر آگاه هستی و خدا همین لحظه من برای کسایی دعا میکنم که خواسته ای دارند و تا حالا او را در پشگاهی تو نوردن و دعایی دارن یا آرزویی دارن یا چیز چیزی از که نگرانشان میکنن یا هر چیزی که هستن خداوندا میخوام اونا این قدم رو بردارن و بیاد در جلوی تو و همه چیز رو در دستای تو بسپارن Dear Jesus I am so happy and grateful for the technology and for this moment and Lord I pray that one day the whole world can know you and follow you I am so blessed and I experience and I am full of joy and happiness And, uh, and it's, it's not a result of work. And it's, uh, Jesus is your gift. And you died on the cross. And you sent the Holy Spirit. But everyone can have this. Lord, you died for me. You died for my brother. You died for the whole world. You died for everyone. And you didn't stay there. But you are alive now. Lord, you changed my life, and I believe that you can change everyone's life. A person like me, I became a, your follower, and loved people, and shared you with them. And I have no doubt that anyone can be. And I was very serious, and I was not a very nice person. But how is that possible that I become a very, a person that I love everyone? And so many times people tried to hurt me and I went on my knees and I prayed for them. Lord, you changed me and you can change everyone. So if there is a, someone is not trusting Jesus yet, And uh, I want you to know that his power has been proved. His power over all kind of powers. So put yourself in his presence. Trust him. As he said, test him. I did that. I want you to get the courage to take a step and follow him. 
I said, whatever is going to happen to me, it doesn't matter. All is matter that I'm with Jesus and I'm walking with him. God bless this channel. God bless my brother. Uh, Lord bless each person who's listening and they were listening and watching. And um, yeah, Lord, I thank you for you. Uh, work with us and uh, I thank you for you just guiding us and just and your plan is the most uh, important plan and most beautiful plan in our life. Lord, I want everyone to accept that and uh, that you have plan for us and we can follow you and we can walk with you and yeah, we we can help people to know Jesus. I did that. More than seven, seventy-five people got baptized, and they're lot, lot walking with Lord. So if I did that, everyone can do that. Lord, help them to understand this. I prayed all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Torai. Folks, you heard it once again. Another story of forsaking. My, father, my father's religion, somebody that was a Muslim, came to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and now he's a believer and serving Jesus. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you share this episode with a lot of people. Everybody, I think, I believe this is the best YouTube channel. We, we glorify Jesus, and everybody should hear these stories. And um, we will have a lot more. Uh, make sure you uh, buy and uh, support my brother Torai. His book is on Amazon and in the description and also in the comments, Destined to Die. But now Jesus has changed his life. So make sure you support my brother. And also till next, God bless.